What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 102. Today we're talking about 13 breakthroughs that I had this past week as an instructor of class 010 of the project. We're talking about the experience of the project, the secrets to life, knowledge, wisdom, fulfillment, and just domination in life. Some of the breakthroughs and things I learned or relearned or learn again at different phases, different seasons, you know, different different seasons of life, you learn different things. You hear something at one point, it means that something completely different two years later when maybe you're in a different phase, a different time in life. Steve says is not always what you want to hear, but it's the shit that you need to hear. And some people will hate, but most can relate. We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. This week's episode, we're talking about what you need to learn or relearn to live up to your fullest potential, find out who the hell you are, what the fuck you're made of as a man, as a person. You know, the product is just for men, but these lessons across the board could be for men, women, children, fucking goats, whatever. We're talking about if you feel like something's missing in your life or or unfulfilled, then pay attention. This episode will give you some of those keys, some of those secrets to the success to change your freaking life. And then, then I, want, I want you to ask yourself, are you constantly striving and hungry and on a constant quest for knowledge and wisdom? If you're not, you freaking should be. Steve Says Every Week is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms. Finally, putting yourself first here, because because you know what, one of the first lessons I'm going to jump into right here, as we're we're going here on Steve says episode one zero two hundred hundred and two after this class is zero one zero the tenth class of the project. One of the first lessons, and this and I said there's going to be thirteen breakthroughs, lessons, takeaways, but it's going to end up being a lot more than that because originally it was seven, then it was ten, then it was eleven. As, as I posted this morning, it was up to 13, and I'm sure it's going to end up being a, a lot more as I start as things just pop in my head and we just go on about this stuff, about the, the shit that you need to hear to break through that next fucking level, to stop bullshitting, to stop staying on that hamster wheel stuck in place. So we're talking, let, let's go, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about uh, in different, again, in different phases, different times of life. You, you might hear something again, it means something completely different. Like think about when you read a book and then you read it again. Maybe you read it a year ago, six months ago. You read it at a different time in life and it means a lot to you. You read shit in that book and you're like, when the hell do they add th- th- this additional information? And you don't even remember it. It sounds like a whole new book to you because you're soaking it in in a different way. Or movies, the same thing. Some movies are just timeless. But some you watch them and, and you thought they were so great. I remember a, a movie when I was a kid. What the hell was it? No Retreat, No Surrender. I thought it was such a great martial arts movie, whatever. I saw it years later as, as an adult, or I think when I was in the Marines, it was like on TV or something. It was fucking atrocious. And I thought I remembered it being this like badass, like Bruce Lee type movie when really it was such a very cheap version of the Karate Kid. But think about that. We're, we're going to go into different lessons. Some of this shit maybe I learned years ago, decades ago, but hearing it again at a different time in life, in a different way, it's, it, it means something different. It means something fucking more. So that, that, that's what I want you to, to, to drive home. And we're always talking here on, on Steve Says, it's about the mind, the body, and the business. And you should be constantly on this quest for knowledge. So that's one, one of the first things is to be prepared. Be prepared. If you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. And that basically means be fucking prepared. Be prepared. If you're always in shape, you never have to get in shape. If you stay in shape year round, you stay in fight shape year round, you never have to get into fight shape. You're always ready. You're always fit. Someone once asked me one time, how many months of the year do I try to stay in shape? And how stupid of a fucking question is that? You know, people say there's no such thing as a stupid question. Well... I beg to differ. There's no, no such thing as a stupid question except for a stupid fucking question. How many years, a, a month of the year do I, I, I try to stay in shape? Fucking 12 months of the year. Why would I intentionally want to be out of shape? 
be fat, lazy, sloppy, purposely to say, all right, I'm going to be out of shape these months of the year. That's just fucking stupid. So I want to break down preparation for you, how to prepare, how to gain confidence, how to have competence, confidence and competence in what you do. And prepare, I break down to an acronym. It's P-R-E-P-A-R-E, obviously prepare. So the first P is for practice. The second, the R is for repetition. The E is for excellence. The, the next P is for push and pressure. The A is for asking questions. The R is for role playing and the E is for educate. That's how I prepare. That's how I, I enter situations with confidence. And I actually came up with this acronym during the last class of the project sitting there and just started writing and journaling and notes at, at, at nighttime when I had about 30 seconds to, to do my journaling and came up with this acronym the last class of the project. And it's really broke down to how I prepare for things like the project, how I prepare for things like any event for hard shit, how you make the hard shit easy so you can go out and search for new hard shit. So the practice, you, you, you have to be constantly practicing. Think about athletes. You're practicing 90% of the time and 10% of the time they're, they're in a game. That gives them the confidence in the game to perform with excellence. You need to practice on practice and execute on fucking money. Then the R in prepare is repetition. You need to do it over and over and over again until you make it automatic. You make those habits or those skills fucking automatic. And even if you fail, you course correct and gain that com- until you gain the confidence in enough repetition, which leads to the confidence. Which then the E is in excellence, is in not half-assing anything. Whatever you're doing, whatever your task is, striving for excellence in every fucking thing. Making everything something that you're trying to excel in, trying to be be excellent in and be the the fucking best in the world. If you're sweeping a floor, be motherfucking excellent at it. Go over and over and over again with excellence. That's what the E is. The P stands for push and pressure. You need to push and pressure yourself. You need to push and pressure others. You need to push and pressure your fucking, your, your limits that you're creating on yourself. Push and pressure your, your beliefs. Push and pressure the boundaries that you've, you've contained yourself in your whole life or maybe that you, you, you were forced into as a kid. Fucking push and press yourself. Leads to the next A. How do you prepare? You fucking ask questions. You ask questions. You dig. You get information. You get more knowledge. You ask questions of yourself in reflection. Ask questions of your peers. Ask questions of experts. Ask for feedback from other people on yourself. That's how you prepare. You get better. You build confidence. Is asking questions and getting feedback. And the the R, the the next R is role playing. Get a partner or in the mirror, out loud, record yourself on social media. Just like repetitions, get it in, but with actually role playing. In the situation, actually going over it. Role playing, rehearsal, whatever you want to call it. But practicing right now, this fucking role playing right here, right? Just become a better speaker. Do it more. You have to do it more. You have to role play it if you can with other pe- other people to push you and press you. All these blend together. And then the E in preparation, in prepare is educate. You need to educate yourself. You need to educate others because you know when you learn something, the best way you're going to reinforce it and let it stick is to fucking teach it. So learn it, teach it. But educate yourself, educate yourself, educate others, read, study, do research, work on your, constantly work on your personal development, be fucking hungry for that knowledge. So the first thing that, that refreshed in my head was this acronym I came up with last time, I just went a little deeper dive into it, is to fucking prepare. That's how you reach different levels. And another level above and beyond the rest of the fucking world is preparation, being prepared. The, the men who showed up to the project that were prepared, they fucking dominated it they crushed it they were able to fight through those tough times because they were prepared and not just physically prepared physically mentally emotionally prepared for the shit that's going to be thrown at them during the during the experience during the program the next thing the next thing is that pain is permanent stop with the bullshit of pain is just temporary or pain is just weak weak, weak just leaving the body these are fucking internet little slogans to give you a big thumbs up and make you feel good about yourself. It's a false motivation. Get into the real world. Realize that motherfucking pain is permanent. This, the moment you can realize that, that you will not be able to be broken. You'll be bulletproof. You'll be impenetrable. Your armor will be impenetrable. Your mental and emotional armor will not be able to be broken through. 
The second you realize pain is permanent, it is not temporary. There's going to be pain, there's going to be suffering, there's going to be hardship. Shit's going to go sideways on a regular basis. You need to accept it, expect it, and fucking embrace it. And then engage in it. Engage in it. Search for it. Search for motherfucking pain. That's the way you need to be thinking about it. Not, not running away from it, running towards it. Let everyone else run away from it. Imagine that. Everyone else avoids the shit that you're charging for head on. That's how you step up. That's how you stand up. That's how you take shit to the next level. That's how you fucking lead. That's how you influence people. That's where fucking leadership is right there. The next, the next lesson is do hard shit regularly. All the time. Voluntarily. In, in some form, do something hard every fucking day. And then in a bigger way, every month. And then in a, in a massive way, every quarter or every year. Some massive mo- motherfucking ridiculous shit that people hear about and think you're nuts. Do shit that people think you're lying about. Like, Tyson will go to, go to school and tell people about some of the things he does. Challenges he does, the workouts he does, guns he shoots, whatever. He tells stories that motherfuckers think he's lying about it. Because that's all the other kids will, will, will lie about what they did, the similar stories, bullshit, whatever. Live a life that people think you're lying. The next thing is to, to create experiences. Create experiences that are gonna you're gonna remember forever. Like these project classes. This is an experience that these fucking dudes will remember forever. So what when was the last when was the last time you created an experience for your family, for your kids? For yourself, for your business, for your team, for whoever, for whoever that they're going to remember a year from now. That they're going to remember 10 years from now. They're going to remember the fucking lifetime. If you're not creating experience, and you're not thinking about consciously and intentionally creating experiences like that on a regular basis. Like every day thinking, what can I do today that my kids will remember for the rest of their fucking life? That's how you should be approaching and attacking every day. And it just happens doing that hard shit a lot of times are the memorable things. Those are the things you appreciate. Those are the things you remember. Make, creating yourself. The, ne- the, next, the next thing is being hard to kill. Being well-rounded. Being fast enough to hang with the fast guys. Strong enough to hang with the strong guys. Athletic enough to hang with the athletes. Good enough of a fighter to hang on the ground. Good enough of a fighter to ha- hang up with the, with the stand-up fighters. That's what you need to be thinking about. Think about it. Smart enough to hang, hang, hang in there with the smart people. Spirits enough to hang in there with the, the tree hugging philosophers. Well rounded. That's what you need to be thinking about it. And and the way to get good at all that stuff is to constantly do hard shit. Put yourself in tough situations on a regular basis. Do things that you're not good at, that you're not the expert at, where you're the worst in the room at something. That's how you push yourself and pressure yourself and challenge yourself to grow. Doing shit that you're not good at, that you're not used to, you're not expert at, that you're not doing on a regular basis. That's what you need to do. Never be the smartest, the toughest, the fastest, the richest in the fucking room. Or you're going to stay at that level while everyone is sharpening their swords off of you. That's good for a percentage of the time. But motherfuckers will be sharpening their swords off of you while you're just staying the same. Next thing you know, you're passed up. You eventually become, in not a good way, the dumbest in the room, the brokest in the room, and the weakest in the room, and the slowest in the room. That's not the type. That's not the way you want it to happen. Put yourself in those situations and environment. Where you're just going to be sharpening the sword non-stop. Like, that's what you need to think about it. The next thing, the next big breakthrough and takeaway point is that mental and emotional training is physical training. People think there's a, it's a separation between the physical, the mental, and all this other stuff. It is the same. It's the fucking same. Think about it. Your your brain is physically causing mental... Actual, you're thinking it's mental, but it's causing physical physical reactions in your body. The way you think, you could sit there and close your eyes and intentionally get your heart rate to spike through the fucking roof. Think about stress, how st- the impact stress has on your body, giving people ulcers and heart attacks, even diabetes and all kinds of diseases. Eighty percent of diseases and disorders or whatever are caused by stress. Mentally, stress is a mental thing which ends up manifesting physically as illness and sickness. So think about it: mental and emotional training is physical training. That's why you need to stay in, in, in fighting shape all year round. That's the way you need to fucking think about it. Because fatigue and lack of preparation makes a coward of us all, makes an idiot of, of us all, makes a quitter of us all, makes a failure of us all. Get your cardio up. Get your conditioning up. Well balanced. Get your, your strength, your speed, your coordination, your balance, your flexibility, 
your endurance, your durability, your toughness, your physical toughness, your mental toughness. Be ready for a sprint. Be ready for a fucking marathon. That's the way you need to be thinking. Well-rounded. You see, a lot of these are, are interconnected to each other. The next, the next thing is any addiction or vice is just a mask for some form of trauma. It's just running away from your problems. Anything that you could think of that, that is that you have this over addiction to or this vice that you're falling back on. Shit, you know you shouldn't be doing. Bad decisions you're making. Stupid fucking moves. Bonehead moves you're making as a man or whatever is just a fucking cover up. It's just a mask to cover up some bullshit that you're going through or been through. Get the fuck over it. Put on your big boy pants and handle your shit like a fucking grown up. Not by doing some shit you know you shouldn't be doing and, and just deal and, and some addiction or some vice or some drugs, alcohol, whatever the hell it is for you. Stop running away from that shit. Stop being a little bitch. Attack the hill. Charge toward that shit head on. Get that fucking weight off your shoulders instead of just burying it and suppressing it, which leads to stress, which leads to those physical conditions. As you see, all this shit is intertwined, fucking combined together. That's the way you need to be thinking about it. The next thing is, you've heard it before, proximity is power. Being around hungry, successful, motivated, kick-ass men of motherfucking fire on a regular basis is the way you need to think about it. You need to put yourself in those situations around those types of people on a regular basis. And if you can't, if you don't have that type of circle around you in person, you need to create that. Be the catalyst for that. Start that shit in your own town, in your own area. Start your own motherfucking gang. That's the way you need to be doing. You need to be around other like-minded people who understand you. They get you. They understand your, your craziness, your, your uniqueness, your fucking freakness. They understand your obsessive obsessed nature that you have for everything you do where most of the people around you don't those are the kind of people you need to be around the next thing another breakthrough was when you're looking to influence or achieve or sell or break through to someone negotiate whatever it is meet people in person so they can feel your fire they can feel your passion you could be infectious they can feel your fucking conviction for what you're talking about like that one was huge to see it, to feel it, to, to grab it in person, to get, get out there and face to face, nose to nose, feel it, fucking feel it in person. And that's for all areas when you need to meet with someone that could be for giving feedback, receiving feedback, wanting, wanting to talk about a, a, a business deal or a vision you have, something you want to, an objective you want to drive forward and push forward to. Meet in person so they can feel your conviction and you sell that shit with fucking fire and passion and reason and emotion all at the same fucking time. That's how you sell yourself. How you sell an idea, an objective, a project, a negotiation, a dream, a fucking vision, a purpose. That's how you fucking do it. The next thing is don't be a fucking know-it-all. Don't have an answer for everything. Don't have an excuse for everything. No excuses, motherfucker. Don't be a know-it-all. There's nothing worse than thinking when you're hearing something. Even any of these things I'm talking about. If any one of these you said to yourself, oh, I already know that. Oh, I already do that. Then this shit is for you. Then you need to be in the pit, crawling there, suffering, being tortured to find out who the fuck you are, what the fuck you're really made of, and put some real pressure on you if you think you know it all. Because I guarantee you there are so many strengths that you have you don't even realize that exist that you haven't even uncovered yet. You can't even exploit them to push your mission forward, to really dive deep into your purpose and reach real fucking fulfillment. I guarantee you also have weaknesses that you avoid. You cover up your mask, whether it's with those addictions and with those vices or just with lies and bullshit and avoiding tough situations. Guarantee you have those weaknesses too that you mask up. See how all this stuff is still tying together. Don't be a fucking know-it-all. There's nothing worse than saying, I already know that or... I was just th about to think that. Oh, I always say that all the time. Like, shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up and soak it in. I've heard some, some speeches and presentations that I've literally heard 15, 16, 20 times. And guess what, motherfucker? I'm going to be sitting there front row, pen in hand, taking notes like it's the first time I heard it, soaking that shit in because it might be a different phase in life, might be a different season in life. I might be a different motherfucking person. That, that version of me from a year ago it is an embarrassment to where I am now. So that thing I might be hearing today, I'm going to take from a whole, whole different context, whole different perspective, take it to a whole motherfucking different level. So don't be a fucking know-it-all. The next one is always be in fucking competition. 
Yes, you want to be in competition with your competitors, with your fucking enemies. Obviously, you want to dominate those motherfuckers. You want to stomp a mud hole in their ass. But more than that, on top of that, be in competition with your fucking peers. Be in competition with your team. And most importantly, be in competition with your motherfucking self. Be in competition with yourself from yesterday. Be better than you were yesterday, but not good enough for tomorrow. Compete with that motherfucker. A way to judge that, I always ask myself, could I whip my own ass from yesterday? Could I outwit my, my, myself from yesterday? Am I more knowledgeable? Have more guile and wisdom than my version of me from yesterday? So all that balled up into, can I whoop my own ass from yesterday? Always be in competition. Always be striving to be the best. Be number one. Be the top motherfucking dog because there's always room at the top for the motherfucking best. The next thing is, average is a lot fucking harder than awesome. Let me tell you, the, the, the quitters at the project that rang ding ling rang the motherfucking bell, those quitters took the easy, easy route. They took, they took the, uh, the, the route back to their, their life of comfort, their life of average, their life of mediocrity and fucking misery. They quit on their team. They quit on their families. They quit on their future, their dreams, their destiny, their goals. They quit on their motherfucking selves and that shit will stick with you for life. The fat, out of shape ones that just wasted their times and ours that weren't prepared. That's average. That's below average. And let me tell you, average is a lot fucking harder than awesome. Ringing that bell is a lot harder than being awesome and suffering and making it through and going to that graduation dinner ceremony that we had at the project. Becoming a savage fucking servant. Average is a lot harder than being awesome. Mediocre is a lot harder than being excellent. Ordinary is a lot harder than extraordinary. I used to have clients in the gym would tell me these stories. These are all true stories that actually happened in, in consultations with people joining the gym when I was back in New York. And there were the, the, the women who missed, their, missed weddings of their family members, of nieces, nephews, cousins, even sisters. They missed weddings because they didn't like, they, they were embarrassed of how they were going to look in their dress. So they would pretend they were sick or even, even to the point of going to the doctor and getting themselves hospitalized to cover up the fact they don't want to wear a fucking dress. That shit is harder than the fucking pain and suffering it would take to lose some weight, to be fucking awesome, to show up as a badass in that dress and them little hooker heels. Think about it. Average is harder than awesome. That's what you need to think about it. That, 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 that ringing that bell, that song, that sound. Think of that in your head. That's what average is. Quitting, ringing the bell. That's just average. That's just mediocre. Remember that idea. Remember that picture. Remember that visual. Remember that moment. That experience. Think of grown men doing the walk of shame. Giving up on their goals, their dreams, their fucking destiny. Giving up on, on their promises to themselves. Giving up on their families. Giving up on their future. Giving up on their, their, their character and their identity. Not living in, in alignment with who they claim to be and who they are in their identity. That sound of the ring, ding, ding, a ling of a freaking bell, that sound should be imprinted in your head. That enough should be alone to change your state at a moment's notice, always redirecting you towards greatness and fucking excellence. Next, one of the, the breakthroughs and takeaways. Again, I told you there's going to be probably more than 13. I don't even know how. We're just going to keep going. This is just, I keep thinking of more and more in my head. Be ruthlessly yourself. Be yourself. Unapologetically be yourself. Be your freak self, wave your freak banner, stomp your freak flag in the ground so you can attract like-minded freaks like yourself and you can repel and push away the motherfuckers that you don't want any, any business entering your space and your life and your circle. Be unapologetically you. Be ruthlessly you. Not giving a fuck what anyone thinks about you. Unless you're an ass. Of course, if you're an ass, do something about stop being a fucking ass because that ain't cool. Be ruthless to yourself. Be unique. Be polarizing. Go against the grain. Do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Don't give a fuck. As long as you're operating with courage and humility, be your motherfucking self. Be you. Ruthlessly yourself. That's some, that's, that's some hard shit for some people to fucking do. Not many people will do that. Too worried about what people will think of you. Too worried about... Going for th things that you believe you want to go after. Be too scared, too afraid. You have fear and doubt, procrastination. Fuck that. Go after your shit. Live life on your own motherfucking terms. March to the beat of your own fucking drum. Not someone else's. Because let me tell you, if you're not ruthlessly yourself, if you're not unapologetically you, 
and what you stand for and what you want to do in this life, that means, you know what that means? You're not even living your own fucking life. You're living someone else's life. Live your fucking life. Because no one else can't live it for you. Do it yourself. Live your life. Next, the last two that we're going to go over are, are huge. And I save them for last. Because these are fucking huge. One of them is the single biggest determining factor in a man's success is the woman he chooses. Or woman, partner, fucking scarecrow, goat, or whatever the fuck you're into. But I'm going to say man and woman because it's Steve says. And if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. That's the way we're going to fucking word it. The single biggest determining factor to a man's success is the woman he chooses. That's some real shit there because nothing great, no great success or or victory or win has ever been accomplished. First, without suffering, without a little pain, without a little hardship, without a little shit going wrong, without some failure, and without someone there supporting you at your fucking side, having your back no matter what. Like when I'm going out to the project, I have to go off the grid for four or five days to go do what I do out there. Knowing that here in the freak cave that the Russian is holding it down in the businesses with the kids, with whatever else needs to get done. There was eye doctors and dentists that got to get going on. Knowing that that shit is fucking covered and nothing to worry about. That business stuff's going to get taken care of while I'm out there in the trenches. That shit is fucking needed. In Napoleon Hill, one of those books, I don't remember, he talks about the mastermind principle. Forces coming together, different brain power coming together, creating this otherworldly thing up here where a bunch of individuals combine their brain power together, their thoughts and their fucking energy to this greater power being of something that's going to get discovered or created or learned that none of them individually have the skills or knowledge about in the first place, but combined together, forces combined together, create this other thing. And the deepest form of that mastermind principle is when, when there's a man and a woman involved in it. Because that's, that's the, the polars, the, the opposites, the polar freaking getting all the forces together, the force of nature together. And that's when the, that mastermind principle was at its fucking peak. So the single biggest determining factor of a man's success is the woman or fucking goat that he chooses. And the last, last, and certainly not the fucking least important, one of the most important and one of the deepest, hugest lessons that we learned and displayed during the project was to practice, not just speak about it. Too much motherfuckers speak about things like gratitude and appreciation and all this other stuff. Motherfuckers preach about it. They post their cool little little pictures and quotes and all this other bullshit on the Instagrams and the, and the social medias and the Facebooks and all that shit, but they don't practice it. They don't fucking live it. They're not living in accordance to it and alignment with it. They're not congruent with it. They're fucking bullshit, fraud, motherfuckers. You need to practice this stuff, especially practicing grace and forgiveness. Yes, it's coming from me to practice grace and forgiveness. Because you know what? You know what? This goes back to fucking ancient Stoic philosophy 2,000 years ago. Marcus really used to talk about the horrible things that different people would do and how they would act and the things he knew he was going to confront that day. The, the backstabbers, the shit talkers. And he said, you know what? I'm the same as them. I'm them. They're me. I've done the same shit they're doing. In some way or another, how am I going to get pissed off about shit? How am I going to throw someone under the bus and just leave them there to rot and burn and fucking fry? Fuck that. You can't do it. Practicing grace, Bill Miller. Perfect timing as I'm going over the last, the last big breakthrough. Bill Miller just joined us, pre- recent project graduate. I'm going over the last of 13 Lessons and breakthroughs that I learned and relearned during class 010 of the project. And the last one is practicing grace and forgiveness. Not just talking about it. Not just preaching a whole bunch of motherfucking bullshit. But actually in the trenches, practicing it, displaying it. So it's seen out there. And it's, it's, it's an example. It's influencing people around you to do the same. Because we all have done stupid fucking shit. Can't stand it. Someone, someone that a boss shows up. To work whenever they want, but then bitches when people don't show up on time. Or they're going to reprimand someone for not living according to their core values. And they can't even fucking, they don't even know the damn core values themselves. Practice that shit. Set the example. Live the example. And enforce the example. But. 
when needed, when it's fitting, when it's necessary, when it makes sense. Practice grace and forgiveness. Now, we're not saying over and over repeated fucking infractions or whatever, but shit happens. And you know what? Anything you ever, probably anything you have ever talked shit about someone fucking doing, I bet you in some way or another, you've done similar shit in your own life in some way. Guarantee fucking to it. Guarantee it. So those are some of the, the big breakthroughs, the takeaways, the lessons that I took away from class 010, this last class of the project. And just to recap some of those, let's run through some of that on, on the list of what we're talking about. The first one is to always be prepared. If you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. Always be prepared. How do you prepare? With practice, with repetition, with excellence, pushing and pressuring yourself, asking questions, role playing, and constant, never ending education. Always fucking learning with a white belt mentality. The next thing is pain is permanent. The next thing is to do hard shit regularly. Be well-rounded. Be hard to kill. Next is that mental and emotional training is physical training. It's all together. It's all combined. And they all should be done and at fucking tact regularly. Then any addiction or vice is just a mask of some form of trauma that you're just running away from. Avoiding the problems. Avoiding the confrontations. Next is that proximity is power. The next point we made was that most people... Or if you're meeting people in person so you, they could feel your energy, your infectiousness, your conviction. Meet in person. Stop hiding behind a phone, a text, an email when you can. Get in person in front of someone, whether it's to give or receive feedback, sell an idea, sell yourself, whatever it is. The next thing is don't be a fucking know-it-all. On top of that, always be in competition. Be in competition with the fucking enemy, with the competitors, with your peers, and with your motherfucking self. The next thing was average is a lot harder than awesome. From there, the, 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 to be ruthlessly yourself, be unapologetically you. And the final, the final two was that the single biggest determining factor to a man's success is the woman he chooses. And lastly, pa- practice grace and forgiveness. Stop talking about shit. Start being about shit. Stop talking about philosophy and embody it is what they said in the old ancient fucking Roman times is, is a huge saying. And also they, they would talk about it all the time. About how are you going to get pissed off at this stuff going on when you yourself have done the same thing or fucking worse many, many more times. So don't be a fraud, fake ass motherfucker. Grace and forgiveness. Yes, I'm just a graceful motherfucker. Anyway, I got to get rolling. If you want information about the project, send me a private message. We could we could schedule time to, to set up an interview call. We could jump on the phone and see if you're a good fit to join the program. If you don't know, the project is a 75-hour, four-day, fully immersive personal development program for men where you get a chance to live and train and learn with myself, who's a United States Marine and an entrepreneur, with a Navy SEAL, with a a martial artist who's also the vice president of the supplement company, with a business empire builder, SWAT officer, where you're getting years of and and decades of knowledge, experience, and expertise poured into you over that four-day period so you can level up in your family, your fitness, your finance, and your faith, so you can become an even better husband, an even better father, an even better leader, and an even better motherfucking man. That's what the project is about. And if you're not a man or not able to make it out here to Southern California, send me a private message. We could jump on the phone, talk about what other types of coaching programs we could do remotely to help you out. We also travel around the country to coach your teams in your business or one-on-one, high-end, operate-to-dominate, private coaching for yourself So send me a message, private message, send a fucking smoke signal. We will send in the Marines. We will hook you up. I got to get rolling. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.